thank you uh, for coming to this event on this uh, lovely uh, Winnipeg afternoon. It's uh, so delightful uh, to have our spring weather here. I'm wearing a spring suit and a spring tie. Um, <laughs> Uh, and I have come in from the lovely outside uh, to uh, uh, hear our wonderful panelists. My name is uh, Richard Sigurdsson. I'm the Duff Roblin Professor of Government at the University of Manitoba, and it's my pleasure to be uh, the moderator uh, for this uh, fascinating event uh, this afternoon. I would like to thank the Winnipeg Free Press and the uh, News Cafe for uh, being such gracious uh, hosts here. This is a wonderful venue. It's wonderful for all of us to be uh, in the lively exchange district and uh, you know can walk around and buy some vintage clothing when all of this is done uh, and uh, 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 be cool like uh, Winnipeggers are. Uh, uh, I would also like to um, uh, space, say special thanks to the co-sponsors of this event, and that is the uh, Manitoba Institute for Policy Research. Now, uh, th this is uh, a, a, a baby uh, of us at the University of Manitoba and the Faculty of Arts and the Department of uh, Political Studies. Uh, we're so delighted to see this uh, uh, take hold uh, with the support of the university, the support of the uh, uh, of the government of Manitoba, uh, we are going to have a powerhouse research institute on public policy here in Manitoba at the University of Manitoba. And uh, this is only the first, uh, if you haven't heard about this before, this is only the first uh, that you'll hear uh, of this wonderful institute, which over the next uh, several years is going to blow your mind uh, with uh, uh, the, the, the wonderful work that's going to be done on public policy uh, that will uh, uh, focus on Manitoba, on Canada, and beyond. Uh, and uh, special thanks for helping me organize this event uh, and for being such tremendous colleagues and really the inspirations uh, behind the Institute. I would like to thank uh, Mr. Rob er uh, Ermel, if you stand up please, who is, uh, I had to double check, I always get his title wrong. Rob is the uh, Director of Operations uh, uh, of the uh, of the institute, so he's sort of like a COO, I guess, uh, of the institute. Uh, and uh, Donna Miller, uh, please stand up, Donna. Uh, many of you will know her from her outstanding uh, career as a federal civil servant, uh, and uh, we're delighted at the University of Manitoba to have her uh, as part of our community now, and uh, she. Uh, is the uh, executive in residence at the Institute. Uh, so uh, from these two and all of their colleagues, you're going to be hearing so much uh, in the, the next several years. So on to our panel. Uh, well, we have an exciting panel here with uh, uh, three uh, uh, experts from the different uh, sectors, uh, from academia, uh, from, the, uh, from the voluntary sector, and from government. So I'm going to just give a brief introduction uh, for, for each of them, uh, and then we're uh, going to go forward in the order uh, that they're introduced, followed by what I hope is uh, an, an open and lively discussion uh, with all of us involved. So first, uh, uh, representing, I suppose, academia, uh, Dr. Susan Phillips, who's the director of the uh, School of Public Policy and Administration at Carleton University. Uh, she holds a BA from University of Victoria, uh, a master's degree in uh, geography from Waterloo, as well as an MA and a PhD from Carleton University. Uh, she's the author or editor of eight books, author of more than 60 journal articles or book chapters, and has presented, and I was blown by this, approximately 100 conference papers in her short uh, career, uh, which is still just beginning. Uh, uh, her research focuses on the evolving relationship between government and civil society in policy development, service delivery, and promotion of citizenship. In particular, her work concentrates on comparative analysis of the policy, regulatory, and financing frameworks that enable or constrain uh, the work of civil society organizations and philanthropy and the implications for public management. She's won numerous academic awards and received many honors, and I can't uh, uh, list them all. Uh, and at the same time, uh, she has committed herself professionally and personally uh, to community engagement of various kinds. So just to mention uh, a couple of, for instances, she's involved in the Regulatory government, uh, Governance Initiative, uh, the Center for uh, Women in Politics and Public Leadership, uh, she's been a board member for the International Research Society for Public Management, uh, for Volunteer Canada, for Imagine Canada. Uh, she has had an extraordinary career uh, and is uh, really the leading light when it comes to the academic study of the voluntary sector. 
So she's going to, she's going to kick it off for us. Uh, and then uh, practitioners, both from the voluntary sector and government, will follow. Uh, Martin Itzkow is the co-chair of the Manitoba Federation of Nonprofit Organizations. Mr. Itzkow was one of the founders of the Manitoba Federation for Nonprofit Organizations. Also, he's one of the founders of the Canadian Federation of Voluntary Sector Networks, uh, Civil Society Networks a pan-Canadian network of cross-sectoral, provincial, territorial, and local voluntary sector and non-profit alliances and coalitions. Mr. Itzkow has held a variety of senior positions in the government of Manitoba, in the non-profit sector, uh, as well as in the private sector. In recent years, he's also emerged as a leading expert at designing, convening, training, and facilitating community change. Indeed, uh, Mr. Itzkow has devoted his career uh, to making his community and the world a better place through positive engagement in social change. Uh, he's led numerous projects over the last years involving government agencies and the communities they serve. As well, he's become widely respected in Manitoba and beyond uh, for what uh, Terry McLeod, the uh, uh, host of our uh, morning radio show here on CBC, calls the science of leadership. In short, Mr. Itzkow is a successful social entrepreneur, a uh, social innovator driven by a vision of a stronger and more resilient community. And uh, last but certainly not least is uh, an old friend of mine, uh, Paul Vogt. Uh, it, it doesn't look like it because he has uh, retained his boyishness, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, we're, we're almost of the same vintage. Um, and indeed, we're, uh, uh, our, our undergraduate and graduate uh, uh, careers overlapped a bit uh, here at the University of Manitoba uh, before he went on to big and great things, and, and, and I didn't. Uh, 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 he, he went on to be a Rhodes Scholar from Manitoba, one of the uh, members of the, 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 one of the greatest traditions at the University of Manitoba is that uh, uh, we are one of the leaders in not only Canada but across the world in producing Rhodes Scholars uh, like Mr. Vogt. Uh, and uh, he also did graduate work uh, in Princeton as well as, of course, at, at, at Oxford. Uh, and uh, his day job now is the uh, clerk of the executive council and cabinet secretary for the government of Manitoba. I believe you are the longest serving clerk now uh, in, the, uh, in Canada, uh, which uh, uh, is uh, uh, you know, a tremendous uh, achievement, uh, I think. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can't, get, you can't get another job, you know? Uh, uh, that's right. Uh, 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 Mr. Vogt is also an educator and scholar, uh, a great friend of the University of Manitoba who has uh, uh, taught courses at the University of Manitoba, at the University of Winnipeg, uh, has been a regular contributor uh, in whatever way he, uh, he can to uh, the uh, understanding of uh, policy, the understanding of government and administration uh, in this province and around the world. Uh, it was uh, one of my great honors uh, a few years ago when I was Dean of the Faculty of Arts here at the University of Manitoba uh, to award uh, Mr. Vogt uh, a celebrated alumni uh, award uh, from a number of years ago. So while I know he has a whole long list of other achievements and awards, that one surely is the one that counts most. Um, uh, and uh, I would just like to say that uh, of those other awards, and it's uh, uh, noteworthy here while at the Free Press News Cafe, is that he was named uh, as one of Manitoba's Power 30 by the Winnipeg Free Press. Um, and he's, of course, been a, a great contributor to uh, the community uh, as an advisory participant for the International Institute for Sustainable Development, as well as the co-chair of the United Way Cabinet. So we have uh, a panel of luminaries, and I'm going to turn it over now uh, first to Dr. Phillips. Thank you, Richard, for that wonderfully exaggerated uh, introduction and uh, to you and the Institute for the invitation here. First of all, I'd like to uh, emphatically deny that our graduates from the PhD programs at Carleton University have systematically infiltrated the University of Manitoba. Um, at least that's our, our story and, and we're sticking to it, but it's delight, delightful to see so many of them again. I assume this is meant to be a conversation, but I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't give you a few uh, perspectives that, that I hope um, stimulate some, some discussion. 